My name is uh, Randy Vendra. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, professor of orthopedic surgery at the Griffith University School of Medicine and Gold Coast University Hospital. When we designed the Acumet hand system, the idea was to make a system that is simple to use, but yet comprehensive in the amount of fractures and the different fracture patterns you can treat with it. The concept is that there are basically two plate sizes, largely the smaller plate designed for most phalanx fractures and the larger plate for metacarpal fractures. The difference from other systems is that the screws are interchangeable. So the screws are in two sizes, 1.5 and 2.3 millimeters. And the idea is you can use a larger plate on a larger bone, but use smaller screws through the plate to grab hold of smaller fragments. So you don't have to worry about increasing the comminution in complex fractures. Besides the usual inventory of T-plates, straight plates and compression plates, we have specific plates in the system that are designed for particular fracture types. As you can see, plates come in two colors. The, uh, the blue plates are the 0.8 millimeter thick plates and the more robust thicker plates that we use generally for metacarpals are the 1.3 millimeter plates. The Rolando fracture plate is designed to sit at the base of the thumb metacarpal and this is typically how it would be positioned. The hooks will engage the abductor pollicis longus tendon and the key fragment there and provide some immediate stability while the rest of the fracture fragments are aligned alongside the plate and fixated. The curved phalangeal plate is, is unique and it, ha it has a curve in the coronal plane so it can be applied on the lateral aspect of a phalangeal fracture. If there was a distal fracture this plate could be cut short here and locking screws used to engage the distal condyle of the phalanx. If the fracture was at the base then the plate could be cut distally and the T portion would be used to stabilize the base of the phalanx fracture there. Another unique plate is the metacarpal osteotomy fracture and this would be utilized when there is a malrotation of a finger after malunion of a fracture. The fracture could be anywhere along the finger. Rotation can be achieved by correcting the metacarpal and derotating it to bring the finger back into normal alignment. This plate is positioned at the base of the metacarpal. By pre-drilling for the plate, it is possible to use a cutting jig to get an accurate cut, replace the plate and get quick control of the fragments. And this oval hole here allows the 20 degree of rotation that you would need to correct the finger malrotation. This plate is a boxer fracture plate and is designed to stabilize fracture neck of the metacarpal, most commonly happening on the small finger. This has a left and a right side. The left sided plate would sit alongside the metacarpal of the small finger and it would be fixated around about here on the dorsal ulnar side of the metacarpal. So the plate would be positioned on the dorsal ulnar side of the metacarpal and the screws are angled distally. This way, the plate does not impinge on the extensor hood and does not block flexion. If there was a fracture of the index finger metacarpal neck, you could use the plate for the right boxer fracture as indicated here, and this would work well to stabilize an index finger metacarpal. So you would use the left side for the left small finger metacarpal, and the right-sided plate for the left index finger metacarpal. The avulsion plate is unique in that it has a K-wire hole and a screw hole and hooks to hold on to the avulsed fragment of bone to which a ligament is attached. Typically, this plate would be used at the base of, base of a phalanx avulsion fracture, which would be more or less in this position and would be better demonstrated once the skin has been retracted.
So one of the unique features of the system is the save lock sleeve that goes on top of the screwdriver. And this is how it works. You simply place the screwdriver on a screw as you would normally do. But before lifting it out of the caddy, you insert the save lock over the screw head and then lock, engage the threaded portion of the screw head with the save lock. So once the save lock sleeve is, is engaged on the threaded portion of the screw head, this is how it should look. Now you can simply insert the screw into the bone after drilling. When the screw is inserted into the bone, you can compress the plate to the bone. And finally, the save lock threaded portion can be retracted and then the screw will engage the threaded portion of the plate to complete locking. This way you can achieve compression of the plate against the bone. For each screw size there are two screw types. There are the locking screws which have threads on them and there are the lag screws. So the lag screws are designed without any threads in the head and the first three millimeters of the screw are non-threaded. So you can get interfragmentary compression across an oblique fracture without having to over drill the near cortex. This takes away an extra step and avoids the risk of comminution close to the fracture by the over drilling. The lag screw can also be used as the initial screw of a plate placement to compress the plate against the bone if needed. Each specific screw size is color coded. The gold is for the 2.3 millimeter screw. It's a 2.0 millimeter drill and has its own specific color coded drill sleeve. As the bone is drilled, the length of the screw can be estimated by stopping short of the far cortex, measuring the depth to which it has been drilled and then adding a millimeter or two millimeters as required based on the thickness of the bone. So this takes away the step of having to measure it using a depth gauge, although a depth gauge has been provided for this purpose in the set.